The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick, and this is theCUBE. We're here to wrap up. Uh, John Furrier's not here. He had to head back to Palo Alto, but uh, we're going to, Jeff, we're going to cover it for him. This has been an amazing week. Uh, three days, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, two cubes, 75 interviews plus. Yeah, it was uh, 55 uh, when I looked at the playlist this morning before we came down for day three, so, yeah, so a we, lot of interviews. It's been fantastic, and so, Here's the thing, we, we've been covering EMC World now since 2010 with theCUBE, our first CUBE ever. And we have seen the transformation uh, of EMC. I mean, it's, it's, it's tracking you know, with the industry, and of course EMC's growing somewhat faster than the industry, but the whole uh, transformation from back in 2010, the journey to the private cloud starts now. So there was an intense focus on getting the private cloud up and running on premise. Uh, we talked a little bit about hybrid, but it was really all about the, the private cloud, the on-premise cloud and how that's evolved. And then we saw cloud meets big data. We talked about you know, tr IT transformation, transforming your, your, your IT, transforming your business, transforming yourself uh, was one year. Now it's redefine. Kind of interesting. Uh, John Furrier and I were talking to Jeremy Burton about redefine. Sounds like reinvent, which is of course Amazon's theme. And Jeremy said, hey, don't fight fashion. You know, <laughs> the trend is your friend. People right? understand, the trend is your friend. Why, why re-educate them? So that's interesting. And, and I don't, it's not just some throwaway term. Redefine is kind of easier and more gentle uh, to IT people than reinvent. Oh, I don't want to reinvent yeah, myself. No rip and replace, you right? Know? They don't want to do Right, that. exactly. So there's that subtle message there. Uh, the other thing I you're seeing is a year into the federation, EMC last year at its analyst meeting in March announced the concept of a federation, spun out Pivotal, uh, took certain assets out of EMC and, and VMware, I called it the misfit toys, and put it into Pivotal. They're still shuffling. Last quarter, they took some assets and put them back into to EMC. And so, that's the value, or the, one, of the, one of the benefits of the Federation. You can move stuff around pretty seamlessly, you know, with a lot of, without a lot of hassles. Uh, the other thing the Federation does is it allows EMC, really, to sell up into the organization. EMC, you know, even five years ago, really was, was not selling to the CIO, they were selling to either the storage admin in the case of EMC or the virtualization admin in the case of VMware. And the vision of Paul Moritz and Joe Tucci and Pat Gelsinger and we had Howard Elias on and others have really taken EMC to a new level as they're becoming a strategic partner. Uh, Jeremy Burton was also a big part of this with his messaging and, and marketing campaigns. Um, you see EMC, one of the things Jeremy Burton said to us years ago is, we're a $20 billion company. This was you know, several years ago. We're going to start acting like one. And they do. Um, you know, you saw Pure Storage taking pot shots at them this week. Uh, you know, EMC's attitude is bringing on. We love that, right? Because it's just interesting to watch. Um, uh, you know, HP was here with 72 hours of yes. Um, and so, you know, everybody wants a piece of EMC. Yeah, Dave, and you've been coming here for a long time. This was my first EMC world. Great, great energy. And the thing that I enjoyed most about the time here the last couple, three days was all the number of customer interviews that we had. Like I, I was joking earlier, uh, when we were doing the schedule, we did it in alphabetical order, and we had we went everywhere from uh, from the Vatican to Sheboygan in one slot. We've had a lot of old world industry industrial companies. We've had new companies. We had Cars.com. You know, we were birthed during the uh, the internet boom, uh, so we had a lot of great customers. But again, Dave, a couple of questions I have for you because you've seen this you've seen this movie unfold. One is, can, can you drill down a little bit about this concept of a federation? I think it's it's kind of interesting. Um, I, I don't know that I've ever heard any other kind of assemblage of companies come together in, in that way. And then there also seems to be the RSA seems to be kind of hanging off the edge of the federation. Where, where do they fit? Sometimes you see them on a slide, sometimes not. Yeah, it's interesting. They're like a, 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 a 1A in the federation. So to me, it goes back to um, when Joe Tucci came in. You know, he was he was a very acquisitive CEO. He bought a number of assets. Documentum was one. He bought Legato, um, which at the time, you know, I would say didn't really work pan out for those guys. Documentum is sort of they've you know reinvented that into the IIG uh, business, um, and and Legato eventually you know came around. And, and EMC's goal is to Legato's backup software. EMC's goal is to be number one and backup software the number two now. 
So that's taken a long time. Something that didn't take a long time to pan out was VMware. EMC bought VMware for about $630 million uh, back in the early 2000, 2004 time frame, I want to say. It's kind of a lot of dough, $630 million. It's kind of strange, a, a storage company buying the, a virtualization company. And initially, EMC housed VMware inside of EMC. And it was okay, but it wasn't really working that well. Uh, you had a CEO, Diane Green, who really wanted more freedom. Um, you had uh, a very rapidly growing business, a uh, very disruptive uh, technology. And so <clears throat> it didn't make a lot of sense to have that company, VMware, and all that value locked up inside of EMC. At the same time, EMC was, you know, very, has been very forceful, Tucci in particular, that we don't want to give up that ownership. Yeah. Um, so they allowed some people to buy in, they, you know, through Cisco, you know, gave, gave them an opportunity. John Chambers, I'm sure, kicking himself for not buying VMware. And that model, what they did is they maintained ownership of 80% of VMware, and they maintain that today, and they maintain that with by buying VMware stock, and they spun it out as a separate stock, which has done quite well. It's about, got about a $40 billion valuation. If you take 80% of that valuation and uh, divide it by EMC's valuation, it's about 50 billion. About 60 plus percent of, v of EMC's valuation is a direct result of the VMware valuation. So people are essentially undervaluing the core of EMC. Tucci doesn't care. He's saying this is the way to drive shareholder value. <clears throat> now, Diane Green left. They replaced Diane Green with Paul Moritz. Very visionary. Did some wonderful things at uh, 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 VMware. Really set the tone. Uh, also interestingly, in this time frame, EMC lost one of its key executives, Dave Donatelli, went to HP. Um, EMC is known for doing this in the past. <clears throat> when Moshe and I, who was the father of Symmetrics, left the company, um, <clears throat> created a vacuum, and EMC filled that vacuum, and, that, and, and Clarion at the time, which is now part of VNX, blossomed. So you've seen this historically, this company. What did EMC do when, Pat, when David Donatelli left? They brought in Pat Gelsinger. Now Pat Gelsinger is running VMware. So you're seeing EMC consistently be able to attract talent. When Pat went to run VMware, everybody was saying, well, what's, what's Moritz doing? Is he ill? Is he going to retire? Well, it turns out he was running strategy. Okay, that's cool. And then all of a sudden, last March, they announced we've got this federation model. And it was a way for EMC to say, okay, we've got all these assets that are sort of big data related. Let's put them in here in Pivotal and let's create a big data platform. Let's appeal to application developers. Let's start doing some stuff in open source because we don't really have an open source mojo. So you see, you look at the growth rates, Pivotal, a couple hundred million dollars growing at 40% per year, and, and, and VMware growing at you know, 15 to 20% a year, uh, $5 billion company, and then you got EMC, you know, huge company, uh, you know, uh, uh, 20 billion you know, uh, plus, growing not that fast, you know, one to 2% throwing off a lot of cash, $5.8 billion in cash. So what EMC is able to do with that cash is they pay back dividends, uh, they've just increased their dividend 15%, they buy back their stock, they buy VMware stock, and they finance acquisitions like AirWatch, uh, VMware's end user computing play. So the federation, to me, is one, an awesome way to cross the chasm. We had Jeffrey Moore on last week talking about crossing the chasm, why can't big companies do this? They just seem to have a tough time, couldn't put a finger on it. I just don't think they innovate from a business model standpoint, and that's what EMC is trying to do. Now, the challenge is the classic EMC is huge compared to the others. So the others have to grow so much faster to offset the declines or, or the flatness and eventual declines in EMC's core business. But this is the other th use of cash is EMC buys companies, uh, so, and they invest in R&D. So they are hitting a groove swing on all cylinders right now uh, at the direction of Joe Tucci, and he's been able to attract some really top-notch executives. So that's sort of my take on the Federation. So the other thing I find, you, you know, uh, fortuitous for the EMC, for the Federation, right, is, is to leverage the, the expertise and the knowledge and, and really the core uh, virtualization uh, expertise that comes out of VMware and be able to ride that virtualization wave throughout the balance of the computing, st computing stack uh, into storage and more and more into, into uh, networking. 
and then have an external source like AWS really pushing them and that helping push them in that direction. So it seems like it's kind of the best of both worlds. They've got an internal uh, asset that they can leverage across now multiple platforms and multiple stacks within their uh, within the data center, as well as having a nice external push from from a fast growing Amazon, who's really the core cloud driver, and so they get get to leverage the uh, the trend is your friend in terms of cloud and virtualization on both sides, both internal development across uh, an ever expanding piece of the stack, as well as having that external push from Amazon. Yeah, and, and the other thing too, so let's talk about you know, some of the stuff that went down this week. We, heard, we, we found Viper 2.0, last year the big story was when are you going to allow us to run software on commodity infrastructure? EMC's checking that box, uh, adding in some other capabilities, uh, so it's, it's it, it growing beyond uh, the initial uh, HDFS and, and object, you file, you get blocked, they got all kinds of new stack functions that they're building out with Viper 2.0. Uh, the other piece is Nile, they announced Nile last July, uh, uh, they've, they've you know, rebranded it the Elastic Cloud Storage Appliance. Um, Nile, River, bigger than Amazon. Uh, so that's sort of a tongue in cheek, classic Jeremy Burton. Uh, but that's essentially cloud in the box. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if it really is cloud in the box. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think there's certain attributes of it, but um, you know, I think Amazon is the reference model. Uh, we heard KK talking about within internal EMC IT, they looked at Amazon and said, okay, why can't we build something like that? So we'll see if, if the ECS appliance actually can uh, live up to that very high watermark that Amazon has set. The other big blockbuster announcement that was made is the acquisition of DSSD, uh, a rock star team of, of developers uh, and engineers, Andy Bechtelstein um, and, and others from, from the three-part team, uh, these guys, uh, somebody, I think it was, uh, Jer might have been Jeremy Burton, called Andy Bechtelstein the Rembrandt of hardware design. And um, obviously, huge mojo in the marketplace, a lot of credibility. I think it's, it's unclear where this fits. I mean, I think it's clear that it fits in a very high uh, uh, performance, high, uh, 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 low latency marketplace, bringing uh, flash closer to the CPU. This is something we've talked about a lot. Essentially spinning disks are the bottleneck in computer science. Uh, spinning disk and the protocol, the disk protocols, the SCSI stack, if you will. A lot of overhead there. The concept of eliminating that and allowing ISVs to write to an object-based methodology. Object, so simple. Uh, you know, block and even file, sometimes complicated. Block especially, but object is a get, you know, put, put get. Put it there, grab it. Um, now, it's unclear what EMC is actually going to do with DSSD, but I'm sure they have uh, uh, specific plans. They were an initial investor in DSSD, as was SAP. They bought out SAP, and um, so they know this technology, they've been tracking it for a long time, uh, and I'm sure they have big plans there. So that was sort of the DSSD, and then of course a lot on Extreme IO, a lot of benchmarking, classic, uh, classic EMC when they announced VF Cash a while ago, they were trying to take out Fusion IO, and they put up benchmarks. Uh, they didn't say who it was, but we know it was Pure. Pure is you know, coming after EMC and growing like crazy, so obviously they're, they're gaining share. Pure is growing at uh, 50 to, to, maybe not 100%, but, but close to 50 to 75%. I don't know what the top end is. It's more than 50% sequentially. So, you know, it's essentially doubling every, every two quarters or less. Uh, so that's phenomenal growth. Where is that growth coming from? It's coming from the v VNX and VMAX install bases. So it's going to be really interesting. So that's why EMC is so forceful about going after uh, uh, Pure with the benchmarks. EMC has great benchmarking capabilities, uh, a lot of, lot of labs, they'll bring customers in, um, they'll hypnotize them, and, <laughs> and, and they're very good at this. Uh, and so they announced the million dollar guarantee that the, That's right. the services are in line, dedupe services. Um, the fact is Extreme IO right now is services light. It's, it, it's, uh, it's later to market uh, than the Fusions, the Pures, et cetera. So they're going to take some time to build up that stack. We'll see what that impact of all those features is on performance. Of course, benchmarking, you got to be really careful. There's always ways to make a system look bad, but it comes down to really good marketing. EMC was essentially depositioning Pure as 
sometimes as slow as a floppy disk, which is quite hilarious. I think if you talk to their customers, they're, they're seeing that <laughs> it runs slightly better than a floppy disk. Uh, pure customers are pretty happy. That this, the, it, the intelligence that I have says that, um, that, that pure customers that buy a system, a very large portion, not quite 50%, but 30 to 40% actually buy another system within, uh, within a few months. Uh, I think, you know, within a quarter even. So that says to me, you got a player that's bold, making some moves, but then line that up against EMC. It's a $25 billion company with Pivotal, with VMware, uh, with huge uh, services uh, division, massive partnerships. It's going to be interesting to see, but um, I've seen a lot of startups over the years try to take on EMC. Um, they end up getting bought, you know, right, or EMC right. buys them. It really depends on how hard they hurt it. But that was a big theme here at this event. I don't know what your take was on well, it. Well, the other, the other theme that, that we were getting a lot on uh, the other cube is really the, the uh, increased virtualization of some of the big, the bigger uh, and more important applications, and specifically SAP, SAP HANA, and Oracle. And as the virtualization is moving into those applications and the impact uh, from the business, and not just more the periphery, but really getting onto the shop floor and getting into the core the core pieces. So I think that was an exciting development that just, you know, again, Trend is your friend, this continual march towards cloud and virtualization of all this computing, the horsepower, storage, and the applications. But Dave, I want to ask you, you've been coming to this thing for a long time, launched the Cube here in 2010, uh, a lot of excitement here in 2014. What do you think is going to be next year? What's the next big, uh, the next big mountain? Yeah, I think that, um, well, I just wanted to add, there's a lot of core stuff going on too. The VMAX, the, the VNX, the, you know, the data protection services, uh, the, 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 the global services business, VCE, which by the way is hitting you know, on all cylinders again, 50% right, growth, $1.8 billion pipeline. So a lot of good stuff going on in the core. It doesn't get as much attention, you know, it's not the new stuff. Again, Jeremy Burton said it best. If you're not, re if, if you're not relevant to your customers uh, in the future, uh, if you don't show that you're relevant to their future, you got no business hanging around today. So EMC's trying to be relevant for the future, that's why they talk about futures so much. People will criticize them and say, well, you know, they, all they talk about is futures. The key is, do they deliver on those? So you, you saw that with Viper. Now, here's the big thing. One of the things that I'm tracking is, EMC has not had, in the last decade, a great track record of organic investments paying off in a big way. You know, you might get some quibbling on that, but as far as home runs go, most of them have been acqui acquired, whether it's VMware, Data Domain, Isilon, you know, it's the acquisitions that are really innovating. The internal R&D has mostly gone toward incremental improvements in existing platforms to essentially keep customers locked in. I mean, they don't, they don't use that term locked in, but that's what it does. If you keep progressing your services, you make it less attractive for them to leave than to stay, and that's the that's the form of lock-in, that's what I mean. Well, the other thing though, Clayton Christensen would say, that's what your customers that are paying the bills want you to do. They're, they're spending money, they're giving you revenue, they're asking for incremental changes yeah. on the stuff that they're already buying. And, and therein lies his, his crux of the innovator's dilemma is you're being financed to make continuous change, not discontinuous change. Incremental changed. improvements. Right, which right. is why it, it, it comes from typically the startups who are not encumbered, not so much necessarily by a, a technology that they've got to support, but even by a revenue stream that they have to support. Yeah, and, and, and so what I'm tracking, you asked what, was, what do you expect next year? I want to see Viper uptake. I want to, I want to see uh, where we are at with Extreme I.O. I mean, EMC claims, and I believe them, that they're number one in, in all flash arrays. I guarantee they're pushing that stuff hard, they're jamming it down their customers' throats, but, if what they say is true, that architecture matters and they got the best architecture, uh, then they should do very well in this market. And David, our David Floyer has always said that he feels like Extreme I.O. is going to you know, kick butt. Uh, and they're already out of the chute as the, as the leader, as measured in shipments. Now, EMC is you know, masterful at managing these product transitions. So I want to see Viper uptake. I've talked to a number of customers that have Viper. Um, you know, they like the concept. I've said a number of times this week, is Viper a way to consolidate the EMC stovepipes or is it the future of storage? The answer I got from EMC consistently was it's both. So they're at least admitting that that's sort of one of the strategies. So I'm looking for Viper uptake, I'm looking for uh, Extreme IO, and the third thing is I'm looking for more progress on the Federation, uh, especially traction with Pivotal, and I want to see VMware execute on its march to that $50 billion TAM, and I'm also tracking 
the decline of some of the large businesses like, like VMEX, how much of that is reversible? Um, and obviously continue to track you know, other businesses, core businesses, whether it's VNX or VCE. So that's a wrap here, Jeff. It's been a pleasure having you. Um, yeah, we had a great team. They're giving us the hook. They're setting up for the, uh, the Imagine Dragons, I guess, are coming in shortly. But we had uh, two cubes. I think we had seven hosts. We had a crew of five. So good shout out to the uh, to crew, to Mark and Mick and Matt and Greg and Andrew uh, working two simultaneous cubes. Uh, Michelle, our, our uh, greeter, was helping us with all the traffic. So it was, uh, it was a busy day, uh, a new day, first time ever for two cubes simultaneously at the same venue. Yeah. Dave, you guys been, and, you and John just were going and, bananas. And, and a lot of folks <laughs> at the back end, you, know, you, you don't see in SiliconANGLE, Wikibon, Art Lindsay, Kristen Nicole, uh, uh, all our writers that you do see on, on SiliconANGLE. Bert Lattimore running the crowd chat. The crowd chat here has been phenomenal. Uh, Crowdchat.net slash EMC world if you want to check it out. Uh, 21,000 plus views, th almost three million Timeline impressions, 549 posts. That's engagement, we love to see it. Thank you so much for coming in, Tim Crawford and, and others. All right, that's a wrap. Uh, this has been the live production, The Cube, Silicon Angles, The Cube, EMC World 2014. We will be at OpenStack next week, so yep. look for that. Thanks Thank for watching everybody, on. and we'll see you next time. <laughs>